Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. My name is Ken Shreve, joined today by Justin Nielsen. On today's show, we'll uh, go over another rocky session for the stock market. Uh, we did get a little bit of buying during the final hour of uh, trading. Uh, once again, some pretty good economic data before the open was frowned on by the market. Jobless claims actually fell unexpectedly, um, but I'll tell you what, the uh, Fed really wants to see a uh, these job claims start to increase. They want to see some softness in the job market, and they did not get that from the uh, from the weekly jobless claims data. And then uh, second quarter GDP uh, contracted again, just like it did in the uh, first quarter, down uh, six tenths of a percent. So uh, before we talk about today's uh, market action, uh, Justin, looks like you've got uh, three uh, different stocks here in uh, distinctly different <laughs> industry groups. Yeah, yeah, we're we're we're, we're looking everywhere where we can for something, right? Uh, so yeah, we'll take a look at JM Smucker, uh, Double Verify in the tech space, and then also Denberry and, and the oils. Yeah, I was looking at uh, Denbury. A lot of uh, a lot of destruction among the oil and gas uh, producers. Denbury fighting a good fight. So uh, looking forward to uh, going over that stock. But first, let's take a look at uh, the Qs. Uh, Nasdaq uh, 100 uh, down. Uh, looks like 2.9 percent on the uh, on the day. And uh, Justin, what are we looking at these uh, June lows here? And uh, we looks like we barely uh, undercut it today for the Nasdaq 100. Yeah, so I mean, we we've been watching these June lows, and uh, you know, we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit it first. The S and P 500 was next, and now here comes the Nasdaq. And you know, mo most importantly, we were kind of looking at the Nasdaq as the one that was holding up relatively well. It was holding its Friday lows from last week. Um, we were even seeing a potential rally attempt in place, but all of that got wiped away today as. Uh, yesterday's gains turned into today's losses. Uh, got, just kind of showing you that this is a market where you still have to be very careful. Uh, you don't want to get too excited about a single day. That's really important because a single day is not enough. You really need a confirmation of any rally attempt. Well, interestingly, the Nasdaq uh, Composite, the sister index to the Nasdaq uh, 100, down 2.8 percent, uh, and we did not quite undercut that uh, that June uh, low of 10.565. So, uh, definitely, uh, you know, stocks under pressure again today. Let's take a look at uh, the SPY, which is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, of course, and that was uh, going to be down more than uh, 2 percent on the uh, on the session. You can see down just a little over uh, 2 percent. And uh, it, uh, it undercut that low as well. I think it did it a couple days uh, prior as well. Right. And and it's a new closing low. So, uh, again, the, the, the move here is, you know, certainly biased to the downside. And, and that's what we're seeing in all of the indexes, which means that if you if you can if you can just sit this out, that's usually the best way to preserve your capital. In fact, uh, Arusha and I had our podcast this week on stopping the chop because it can be very tempting on a day like yesterday to, you know, start putting something to work, you know, thinking, OK, it's time I can do something. I can make some money again, because I think that's what a lot of people are probably wishing could happen. But again, one day is just not enough. You have to let those stocks really perform a little bit better before you take big action in anything. Yeah, well, we are we are at a point where we could see confirmation of a new uh, a new market uptrend. But you mentioned uh, we're still very early in uh, in in the rally here, and you know we need to let the short covering run its course. If we do start to uh, head higher, and then we just need to to look for that uh, you know sign of uh, power from the indexes. Most importantly, as we've been talking about on IBD Live, we really not need to start to see upside uh, volume come into the market. Uh, even today, we had uh, sharp sharp selling, and volume was. Uh, fairly light, pretty close to what we saw on uh, on Wednesday, but we've seen this uh, tendency of the market to be falling in heavy volume and then rallying back in uh, in light volume. We we need to kind of see that flip flop, right, Justin? <laughs> right. I mean, really, yeah. since Labor Day, uh, we've gotten a lot of distribution days kind of on the docket. So um, you know, we we kind of need to see that stop. And what we've seen for a lot of the the upside, you know, it just even these rallies that a lot of stocks have gone through, uh, they just haven't really had any volume conviction behind it. And without that volume conviction, it's it's just a little bit more risky to get involved with anything. Yeah. Even just looking at the Dow here, you can 
can see NYSE volume uh, distribution started to uh, pick up in in uh, in in the indexes uh, several weeks ago. So the handwriting was on the wall when the Dow first broke below its 50-day uh, moving average. But it's pretty easy to see all these uh, above-average volume declines uh, uh, to the downside. All right. Well, let's turn our attention to some stocks uh, that are on your uh, radar, uh, Justin. And the first one is going to be uh, JM. JM Smucker. Yeah. So uh, the ticker symbol here is SJM. And, you know, this is, you know, you have to kind of just have that sense of optimism. Even if you're not doing anything, you have to be looking for the stocks that are holding up relatively well. Um, but it's also worth kind of taking a note at what type of stocks they are. So JM Smucker, I mean, look, they, they, they make jelly, peanut butter, food, all the all the snacks that you could want. Um, and the relative strength line is very strong and we do have a pattern here and this is one of the few stocks that is actually look it it had a nice rally yesterday and really retained the bulk of those gains today maintaining itself above the 50-day moving average line all of that is great but now let's take a step back to the weekly chart and this is not a stock that tends to move very much anywhere. This is a place where uh, institutions are, you know, they have that mandate to not hold cash. They have that mandate to be fully invested. And so in a market like this, this is where they hide. This is where they park their money. This is not where they're thinking that they're going to make a great deal, because what typically happens is when you get into a good market, that money is going to kind of flow out of here. And um, so while while this is one of the better looking charts out there, you also have to kind of put into the perspective, what can you expect from the company? Uh, you know, what is there something new going on? Are there earnings that are really increasing in a big way? And you see for this stock, you know, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's earnings are kind of back and forth. Um, you know, overall, it's, you know, single digit earnings growth for the for the annual earnings. Um, so this is not something that's really going to blow the doors off of your portfolio. Uh, so if you can, uh, you know, a lot of times cash is a better place than in a stock that might kind of take up some of your buying power when the market does eventually turn. Yeah, no doubt. In fact, I was looking inside this group. Uh, we have a, a company, I believe it's a group here. Uh, yeah, Lamb Weston here, LW. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is actually a pretty good uh, technical setup. I'm going to uh, talk about this one in the uh, earnings uh, preview column this uh, this weekend. But it's a pretty big company with a market cap of $11 billion, But you can see this is uh, another stock. Same industry group as uh, mm -hmm. as. Uh, as a smucker, but uh, in a pretty good uh, technical uh, setup as well. So definitely money moving into some more uh, some of the more defensive uh, areas of the of the market. All right, switching gears to the technology sector. Not a lot of good uh, happening among tech stocks uh, lately. Double Verify, though, is still uh, fighting a, a good fight. It's come off lows. It's uh, holding above some uh, some key support levels. Uh, impressive uh, relative strength here. Yeah, I think uh, the, the key here is the fact that it's been able to hold up above both the 40 week moving average line and 10 week moving average line. Um, you know, that's corresponding on the daily chart, of course, to the, the 200 day and the 50 day line, uh, respectively. Um, but, you know, for as much as we saw some strength coming into this, uh, you know, on that bounce from its 50 day moving average line twice here, um, you know, this is maintaining itself. So we do have that one kind of sore thumb that's sticking out in terms of the big volume spike on the red side. But for the most part, this at least did have some heavier volume on the upside right after uh, the, the September Labor Day holiday. Um, and that that does kind of make it a little bit of a contrast with a lot of other things out there. So I like the fact that at least got some of that uh, upside volume and just, you know, except for that one except for that one day, uh, pretty much the volume has trickled lower here. So what I'd like to see is, hey, can some volume return back to this stock if it goes up? But right now, I think it's holding up well. Um, this could be, you know, this could be something that just goes sideways for a little while while the market is still in its throes. And uh, if it is able to, you know, kind of right itself and, and maintain itself above those moving average lines, uh, this could be one to watch for the future. 
Okay, that makes uh, makes a lot of sense. All right, finally, uh, in the oil and gas uh, sector, uh, specifically uh, the oil and gas uh, producer uh, group, where you've got names like Devon Energy and Matador Resources and Diamondback Energy. Boy, these stocks have all been hit really, really hard. But let's uh, take a look at Denbury because it really has a completely uh, different uh, look to it. While a lot of other group uh, peers with good fundamentals are, are plunging through uh, key support levels. Uh, Denbury is, um, uh, you know, holding support here and uh, rose for what the fourth straight session today. Yeah. So in a market where everything is kind of going down, uh, getting knocked down by 2% at, at least, uh, you look at a stock like Denbury and you see it gaining 2%. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So, of course, you're going to see that relative strength line soar versus the S&P 500. Um, but more importantly, look at that volume. This has got some volume behind it on this rally. And that's something that, again, it's just missing in so many stocks. Now, you have to keep in mind what's going on with oil. I mean, we can look at USO real quick. That's the, um, the ETF that kind of tracks the oil spot price. And, you know, exactly what you were saying, Ken, there's been a lot of destruction in the individual names here in the oil space. And that's reflected with what we see here on the spot price of oil. Um, but you got to wonder what's going on with Denberry that it's able to kind of buck that weakness, have volume behind it. And, you know, it's, it's definitely a relative strength leader right now. So this is definitely one of those groups that was so strong for most of this year. Um, if there's going to be a comeback, Denbury looks like one that could be leading the way. Yeah, when, when Denbury actually just really started rallying and actually broke out of this long consolidation here, even the volume uh, when it was uh, rallying up the right side, uh, very, very impressive here. So uh, uh, we talk a lot about a, the, the volume profile of a, of a stock, and you can see its accumulation distribution rating is B+, plus, composite rating of 99, the highest possible. So this one's got a lot of positive uh, qualities and a good one uh, for the watch list. Again, I'm in a lot of carnage uh, in the the oil and gas uh, sector. All righty, Justin. Well, thanks uh, very much for those uh, three stocks. Appreciate it as always. Um, that'll do it for uh, today. If you haven't checked out IBD Live uh, yet, uh, well, we'll be back tomorrow just before the market open at 6.20 a.m. Pacific time. That would be 9.20 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, I believe, uh, David uh, Chung, a colleague, is going to be in the uh, the host uh, seat tomorrow. I'll be uh, uh, paneling al al along with a couple of other uh, colleagues. So if you haven't checked out IBD Live yet, where we discuss uh, actionable stocks in this type of market, there's not not much actionable these days. But we're uh, analyzing uh, the market, looking for signs of strength. So we. We'll be doing that again uh, tomorrow morning. So investors.com slash IBD live uh, for more information. Uh, until then, have a great afternoon, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.